From the dark waters of the Black River to the lofty high hills of Santee, this land has long been home to native and adoptive Americans. The Santee and Watery tribe settled here in what would become known by the European settlers as a backcountry of South Carolina. This fertile land was a hunting ground of the Catawba tribe until 1750. The earliest colonial settlers in what would become Sumter District were Scots-Irish, who moved up the Black River by 1739 into the present-day Sumter County from Williamsburg Township, which was centered around present-day King Street. These Scots-Irish settlers came to America to claim free land offered to European Protestants by South Carolina's colonial governor, Robert Johnson, beginning in 1732. In the western part of the district, along the Watery River, the land above the juncture of the Santee and Watery Rivers was held in reserve by the colonial government for Scots-Irish settlers in what was called the North Britain Tract, until finally being opened for general settlement in the 1750s. Early settlers in this section came to South Carolina from the colony of Virginia, and many French Huguenot settlers came up to this place from French Jamestown on the Santee River. The high hills of Santee on the eastern side of the Watery River above the North Britain Tract was settled by European Americans beginning in 1740. Their earliest dwellings here were simple log cabins. By the 1760s, frame houses began to be built as water-powered sawmills were established on the area's numerous swift creeks. Sumter District was a part of the colonial Craven County. St. Mark's Parish, the largest in South Carolina, was established here in 1757 after the population had grown sufficiently. The first Episcopalian church was built in the parish and completed in 1765 near the Watery River. The Presbyterians, prominent in the eastern part of the district, built their first church in the Salem Black River community in 1759. Sumter is the namesake of Revolutionary War General Thomas Sumter, a Virginia native who made Sumter District home for 70 of his 98 years. Born in 1734, Sumter, the longest living general of the Revolution, died at the high hills of Santee at the age of 98 in 1832. During the Revolutionary War, Sumter District was not the scene of major battles, but of British efforts to capture American generals, Francis Marion and Thomas Sumter and their militia. During the Revolution, much traffic by British troops was seen along the King's Highway, which paralleled the eastern section of the Watery River from Santee to Camden, the present-day Highway 261. Early settlements in Sumter District included Stateburg, established in 1783. It was founded by General Thomas Sumter and was the first seat of government in the district. In 1785, Stateburg missed becoming the capital of South Carolina by one vote. In 1795, the courthouse at Stateburg burned and district records were destroyed. Later in 1800, the town of Sumterville was established at John Gale's Plantation near Turkey and Shot Pouch Creeks. This would become the permanent seat of government in Sumter District. Sumterville grew slowly. By 1824, the village contained a dozen houses, a tavern, a courthouse, a store, and two churches, 
the Baptists and the Presbyterian. Its population became diverse. The original Scots-Irish, Virginia transplants, African-Americans, and French Huguenots were joined by the Sephardic Jews from Spain and Portugal, New Englanders, and Irish and old country Scottish immigrants. Sumterville was incorporated as a town in 1845. By 1850, the village boasted of containing 90 houses and a population of 840 persons, of whom 330 were African American. The railroad came to Sumter District in the late 1840s, and soon Sumterville became a railroad hub. The railroad held the growth of the town. The urbanized place dropped the ville from its name in 1855. On the eve of the war between the states, Sumter was a thriving town with an economy rooted in the land. Agriculture was the mainstay, and as elsewhere in South Carolina, cotton was king. As the war progressed, Sumter's railroad lines, established to carry cotton and manufactures, became vital lines of transportation of war munitions and army stores. These railroad lines led Union troops into Sumter's midst in the last days of the war. Charleston fell in February 1865. Columbia was burned. Union troops destroyed the rail lines from Sherrill to Darlington, and Confederates burned railroad bridges across the P.D. River. The result was an immense amount of rolling stock loaded with war materials immobilized between Florence, Manchester, and Camden with Sumter at the center. Union General Edward E. Potter was dispatched from Georgetown to destroy these munitions and trains, which he blew up at Manchester, at Beach Creek in Stateburg, and at Bradford Springs, all occurring days after the April 9th Battle of Dingles Mill, fought a few miles south of Sumter, on the very day of General Robert E. Lee's surrender at Appomattox. During Potter's raid, Sumter District landmarks were threatened. Milford was saved from Union torches by swift-thinking owner, Governor John Lawrence Manning. The borough house was looted, and silver and family treasures were strewn and later retrieved along the King's Highway as Union troops headed south to Manchester. Ironically, despite the destruction during the war, it was a railroad that allowed Sumter to recoup its losses and prosper in the years after the war. The Main Street Historic District and the Hampton Park Historic District, circa 1870 to 90, reflect this economic recovery. By the turn of the 20th century, Sumter had electric lights, a city waterworks and sewerage, a citywide telephone system, paved streets and sidewalks, and boasted that it was the first city in the world to adopt the council manager form of city government. Sumter embraced the progressive era with enthusiasm as it also revered its past. The 20th century would bring vast and swift changes to Sumter County's landscape and social fabric. World War I saw many of Sumter County's best and brightest off to a global war. World War II brought the global war home to Sumter as the Army Air Corps Shaw Field was built on our runway flat land between Stateburg and Sumter. In 1940, our citizens sent a delegation to Washington, D.C. to offer a 3,000-acre site to the United States government for an airfield. In 1941, the citizens of Sumter bought the track made improvements for our country, and offered the site to the United States for $1 per year for 99 years. Shaw Air Force Base has become a vital presence in the ongoing defense of our country, 
and a peacekeeping presence for our world. Can you imagine General Thomas Sumter and his compatriots mulling over the changes we witnessed here in the past 260 years? Imagine the vision they had for this place in their time as they began life here as new settlers in the back country of South Carolina in the 1740s and 1750s. They passed down their hopes and dedication to the present age through their democratic principles, diligence in the establishment of religion and education, patriotism, community service, love of place, vision, dreams of tomorrow. Sumter County, ours is a sacred trust.